Android was created in October of 2003 and bought by Google in July of 2005. Since that point, Android has continued to grow exponentially, and since 2013, Android has been the world's most popular mobile operating system. But how did all this start, and really, how did this rather insignificant seeming project become the world's most popular mobile operating system in such a short amount of time? The smartphones that people used in the mid-2000s were much different machines than what people carry around in their pockets today. They were thicker, bulkier, slower, and much less capable devices. Furthermore, these smartphones of the time were a ridiculous pain for developers, because the world of mobile operating systems was becoming more and more fragmented. In 2003, Andy Rubin, Rich Minder, Nick Sears, and Chris White founded Android Incorporated. Andy Rubin and a small team of software engineers soon started work on a mobile operating system known as Android. And just a couple years later, in 2005, Google acquired their entire company. Not long after, on October 22, 2008, the first commercially available smartphone running Android was released, the HTC Dream. It wasn't the most impressive phone on the planet, with a 528MHz single-core CPU and 192MB of RAM. But it did its job well, which was to demonstrate to the world just what Android could do. Android versions Cupcake and Donut were soon released, with Cupcake paving the way for future touchscreen-only Android phones, and Donut adding greater hardware support for the operating system. Also, it was around this time that it became more and more apparent that the most unique thing about Android was its open-source nature. Because Android was open source, hardware manufacturers were allowed to tweak and add skins to Android, and other companies like Amazon were allowed to run Android on their Fire tablets without Google Apps. Google launched their own line of Nexus branded devices in 2010, starting with the HTC built Nexus One. The Nexus One was a much more thought out device than the HTC Dream, and as a result was a much more attractive phone. Around December 2010, when the Nexus S was released, Android Gingerbread was also revealed, which introduced a refreshing new look and feel for Android. After experimenting with Android Honeycomb, which focused on bringing Android to tablets, Android Ice Cream Sandwich was released and the Galaxy Nexus was born. Android became much more sleeker and elegant with Ice Cream Sandwich, and the Galaxy Nexus did not disappoint either. Just a little while after, Google released Android KitKat and the Nexus 5. The Nexus 5 was an amazing phone, with an interesting design, great specs, and a great price. But the Nexus that followed it, the Nexus 6, might have been an even more interesting phone because of its software. The Nexus 6 ran Android Lollipop, which introduced us to a fresher, more polished version of Android. Lollipop redesigned all of Android, while adding in a plethora of new features, and introduced Google's new design standard, Material Design. Android Marshmallow was introduced to us next in September of 2015, running this time on a duo of devices, the Nexus 5X and 6P. The 5X was a more affordable phone with still decent specs, but the 6P stole the show and really ticked all the boxes of a great smartphone for that year. And that brings us to where we are today with Android Nougat and the Google Pixel. Nougat was more of a tweaks update, but it did add quite a few cool new features to Android, and the Pixel was a good smartphone. But this all begs the question now that we've talked about the history of Android. What is the future of Android? Let me know what you think in the comments section below. Thanks for watching, I really hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, please like and share this video. Go ahead and smash that subscribe button if you're interested in checking out our future videos, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.